Guess who I have on the show today? One of my favorites. You guys are going to believe it. So I'm just going to wrap. I only have 10 minutes, so I got to do this quickly. But we have Eliza Schlesinger, hey the only female winner of nine seasons of Last Comic Standing on the show. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. I couldn't say no to you. Oh, she is just the sweetest person, too. Just generally sweet. I met you years ago in New York City. We were at um, Comics. Oh my God! Yeah, a close long time now. ago. It was so and it was so good. Wasn't it so good? I think I was co-headlining, so I wasn't thrilled. <laughs> and like, I don't I remember, but like it was right. it was cool to go to go to New York. Yeah, it yeah. was cool, and I mean, it was so professional. The sound, then you can get a great video afterwards. You know, it was before everybody was giving you nice videos. You were making it work. I was just there. Oh yeah, you got to hustle. Yeah, you I didn't even hustle. You got to get everything you can get. Well, they opened a, a club in at Foxwoods. Okay, the guys from Comics. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know, maybe they choose the name. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. It was fun. Well, tell us what you're doing now because, I mean, you know, just uh, your season was so good and you were so hilarious and just, I love how physical you are on stage. I'm paying for it right now. I'm so, it took me 30 minutes to do this makeup and it is sweat is cascading off my face. I am uh, physical. Um, so what am I working on now? Yes. So I just, uh, I'm working on a show. That, I, that I'm writing, so hopefully that becomes a show. Yes. But we won't say anything. Okay. Um, hopefully working on a late night show. Love it. Fingers crossed. Late night. Yeah, don't even get me started. I would get me started, but maybe we'll make that the monologue of <laughs> the first episode. I have a book um, that I'm writing, comes out in 2017. Okay. And I just got a second season of my ABC digital show called Forever 31. Oh my goodness. So I'm going to write that. Congratulations. Thank you. You are making it work. Will you do this bit that has me cracking up about? Like what type of person a male comic is? Oh yes, <laughs> and you start breaking it down, and it is hilarious. Oh my gosh, what was the catalyst for that joke? So the bit for, for those of you that are unfamiliar with my brand new bit that no one has seen except for you, uh, it's basically I just say I talk about being a woman in comedy is difficult because there's a, a, a calloused exterior built up, and you have to be strong not just physically because you're working a lot, but mentally, because you never know who's coming at you. People underestimate you. People are harass you. They're mean to you, whatever. And the more successful you get, of course, the less it happens, but it still happens. And I felt that I was a, at a place in my career where I could just say, you know, uh, male comics take all the insecurity of the ugliest kid you made fun of in fourth grade, put that into the brain of a body with a questionable physique as a 35-year-old stoner, and have him just spit uh, <laughs> horrible things at any woman that reminds him of a cheerleader that rejected him. These are my colleagues. <laughs> And I felt that I was at a place in my career. And it came out, honestly, I was trying to explain about um, me, and I was trying to explain how after a show, I'm, I don't feel very sexual. I still am very, I feel like I'm in fight mode still, because right. I just walked off stage. And as you know, that energy takes a minute to dissipate. Like, you're jacked up, right? Yeah. You can't even go to sleep for a few hours. For, for real. And uh, so I was trying to just explain, like, girls are here on dates, so you're in flirt mode, and I'm, I got this, like, dyke on my shoulder, like, why don't you show them how good you are at air drumming? Like, it's just, there's, there's nothing delicate about it. And then I was like, well, why? Well, what goes into some of that aggression? And then I thought about the years of sort of deflecting incoming comments, and you really never know, is this person trying to shit on me? Are they hitting on me? What's their angle? A lot of, and a lot of guys are brilliant and they're awesome and they're really cool, but it's the insecure ones I think when you're starting that really, you know, they try to get you out of there. Mm -hmm. I had the benefit of winning a national television show, so maybe a lot of the shit was talked behind my back. Uh, but yeah, so it came from that. It came from me being like, I'm an upperclassman now. Mm -hmm. I can go ahead and say exactly how I feel. And so you won the show years ago. Mm -hmm. You've, of course, been grinding it out and working, and I'm sure you feel like you're so much more seasoned now than you were then. Oh, yeah. Do you feel like you're tougher now than you were then? Tougher in that I don't get phased easily. Like, I don't, you want to put me on after whoever? I don't care. There's nothing that I haven't tackled. Right. I've done the Tonight Show, which is nerve-wracking. I did. I got my start to my career on NBC, on that, like playing for my life on national television. Comedy will never be as competitive as that thing was. Right. So, yeah, there's definitely. I'm definitely tougher. Things don't always roll off my back, but. I always think every shitty show you do just helps you get a little bit stronger. Exactly. You went on tonight after Margaret show, you know, so yeah. like you said, you, there's nothing you can't do. No. You know? And you know, and it, and it comes from 
doing years of taking that spot. Like, oh, Dane's on. Oh, Sebastian's on. You're like, I'll take the spot. And yeah, I've had comics be like, oh, you're growing up. I don't want to go back to you. I'm like, but you're going to be so much better. Even if you don't do well, mm -hmm. you're going to be so much better because nothing hurts more than bombing after somebody. And I've gone on after like Mark Marin, and everyone loved him and was there for him. And then you're like, oh, this stuff's not great. But you learn to shake it off. You mm -hmm. learn to figure out the energy. There's always lessons. Yeah, when I first started, I was so uncomfortable with silence. I took silence as I'm not funny. Totally. So I started writing jokes so I could laugh, 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 mm -hmm. laugh. Then as I kept, I was like, I really, well, I'm at a place now, I don't care if they laugh. But you know, Totally. So, don't let them know, know that. So I'm yeah. very comfortable with silence yeah. at this point. And it's a process, you know? It's a process. Some people are, I very early on, I talk fast anyway, my whole life, people like slow down. I would tell my jokes very fast, that way if one didn't work, you wouldn't notice. And I still do it today. It's for sure a defense mechanism, but it's become my style. Okay. I'm not good at pausing. I'm the timing is in the joke is good, but like if you start laughing, I'll just keep talking. And I have the material for it, but it's definitely something that I really try to be cognizant of because it's fun to exhaust your audience, but you don't want to sacrifice any of the art because your brain's going so fast. Well, how old were you when you knew that this was a career you really wanted to pursue? Um, I always wanted to do comedy. Okay. I was always going to be funny for a living. Okay. I was a funny kid. My family was funny. I was just, you know, I look back at like things my mom wrote about me. Like I always had like a twisted sense of humor. So it wasn't necessarily stand up, although I think I might have said stand up not knowing what it was. Uh, and I just knew, you know, when you're a kid, you're in the suburbs of Dallas, Texas. You're like, I'll be on Saturday Night Live. Like that's the only thing you know, really. Right. I never studied stand up. And then when I got to LA, it just kind of took that. It just, I did a show and it kind of started working, so I just started working very hard with no real goal. Like, I wanted to have a late night show one day, but I just, I liked doing it, I was good at it, and I just put my head down and worked hard. And I was very fortunate to get that break of Last Comic Standing, and that kind of puts you on this path, and it's like, well, fuck, I'm not just going to disappear after I won this thing, now I got to right. do something. Right, I have an audience now, let me just rock this thing out. Yeah. People would love for you to disappear. They would love for you to get that and be gone. And I was just like... I was like, I'm a headliner at 25. Do I have the material? No, <laughs> but they don't need to know that. <laughs> so how did you uh, play it off? Because like you said, they don't know that. So how were you able to play it off and get the material? Like 45 minute headlining sets. I just scraped, because after the thing you went on a tour, I don't remember how much time I did on that, but you scraped together the bits you have, the bits that people saw on TV, and then slowly you And throw in some crowd work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you slowly start to write it, and then you do a half hour on mm -hmm. Comedy Central, you get that, and then you, you, know, you just, you build. Right, you just right. build. Well, you have done a great job oh, building. Thank you. And so, um, so the late night thing, because if anybody can get it, it's you. Oh, thank you. You know, because I look at all the uh, the ladies. I guess the Samantha B. You know, she mm -hmm. has something. But there's really not a long history. Like Whoopi Goldberg had a late night show, but it wasn't the typical late night show. I just, you yeah. know, so it's it's time for a woman, and it's and I, I think it sh I think it should be. I there. well, please write a letter to the network. Yes, I, you yes. know we got. Two guys on the air with brown hair named Jimmy. <laughs> I think we can find a room for a woman. I also, yes. I think the key now is it's like, yes, I'm a woman, but I'm going to be funny just for funny. I'm yeah. not going to make, this is not like girl power. Like I'm going to do things that defend women, right. but it's important that men watch too. Right. But you know what? I think once Hillary gets elected, mm -hmm. that's going to help. Because okay. w once women start getting seen in non-traditionally male positions, mm -hmm. I think the floodgates will open. Hope so. You know, it's like black folks in athletics. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they let having, one in. You guys are having quite the year. Oh, yeah. We're fucking folks up now. We're exhausted. Swimming, everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Take like, good God almighty. So it's like you let one in and the floodgates open. So that's what I'm hoping will happen, happen with this election because Trump cannot. I mean, this He's man just not. cannot it's, win. It's not going to happen. But are you waiting for the debates? Well, yeah, I mean, yes and no, because it isn't as if I'm like, I'm undecided. Let's see how this pans out. <laughs> but I think, uh, you know, of course, the goal is in 50 years, like, like to not look at a woman and think female comic, just to think comic. And I think my material chips away at that. But yeah, you know, even in terms of black and white, you know, like there are things now where you wouldn't say, oh, a, a black athlete. You say he's an athlete. <laughs> right. Actually, white athlete is more the thing. <laughs> How do you get on the Lakers? Yeah, right? <laughs> Who did you pay? So I guess the uh, the objective is to just for all of it to just keep doing it until it's not a female comedy. It's, you know, 
Right. Well, that's right. what you triple So, yeah, we need you. We need more women in late night. We need more writers. You know, Lori Kill Martin is holding it down She's right very now. Funny. I follow her on a. I love yeah. Lori. So, yeah, but thank you so much for thank doing you. this. Thank this you for is having a hot me. 10 minutes with you. It was hot. <laughs> I am hot. <laughs> She's literally Schmitzel. hot. Literally and figuratively. Thank yeah. you so thank you much, so much, Eliza. We're going to hit the hot 10 minutes. We're going to hit the hot 10 minutes.